Check the amperage on it. You would have to, of course, push the interlock carefully, push it up, and turn it to the out position. Which it's trained to careful to do that, not to get electric. Can I check that back Check the belt tension by pushing uh, down the center of the belt. Should have a half inch, three quarter inch play so the belts aren't too tight. Be binding and causing a high amp draw or too loose so it'd be slipping. Uh, which says, seem good. This motors have already been run. The amps have been checked according to the amp rating on the motors. I'm glad you're here. Take a couple of people to cover. If you needed to adjust tension, how would you do that? Oh, you loosen the motor? Well, the motor. Yes. On its mouth? Yeah, you move the motor. The bolts here, you'd have to. Exactly, adjust the motor in sliding forward or backwards. So it's not an adjustable pulley. Right, yeah, it will pull it or push it. Oh, okay. So same uh, concept on the smaller motors, the smaller fan drives and well, more or less some of them may be adjustable differently. I haven't been to every motor. Some of them may have an adjustable pulley where you can uh, make an adjustment on the motor amp draw. Okay. Uh, belt tension is usually adjusted by moving the motor um, amperage by adjusting the pulley. Okay. I guess when we're looking at the other uh, fan sections, we can we can open up any if we're curious. But I think we got the idea. And he just said, "Do we need to do this on every motor?" And I said, "Only ones that are like a, a, a different concept." But I think we get it, right? Are you good on this one? Okay, we can energize the fan now. So that, that what other maintenance type of issues we got here? We got a couple of zerk fittings. Well, and yeah, we have zerk fittings on the motor, which has got the low key. Maybe not, it might be permanent. Where is it, yeah. right in there? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. there's not a Zerg fitty. They have to be added in there. So there's one on the front bearing. Does it have a bolt in it too, or? Yeah, we've got to put Zerg fittings in the motor. And we have the bearings on the blower, one on each side. Zerg fitting nope, there, yeah, here and here. Well, isn't that the way that works? I don't know. I would think there should be a Zerk fitting there. If you've got a plug here and you've got a plug down below, you'll fit one with a Zerk fitting. If you pull the plug out of the other one when you go to grease it, so it doesn't, it doesn't overpressurize the cap. Okay. Right? So you know when you're full. Yeah. Yeah. Pump it in, and when you. So I'm what have we done so far? Is there what's in there now? There's no Zerk fitting in there. So is there grease in there? When they come greased, yeah, it's but on maintenance you need to put the Zerg fitting in. So you don't leave a Zerg fitting in? You, you yeah, just, you can leave them in, just like that. They're, they're, they're in. Is that common with these things? Yeah. All right. You don't to put your own in. All right. No, the bearings came with them. The motor didn't. They don't leave it. Can, uh, turn the fan on. It contact on. makes a great deal of noise. Ready? Go ahead. We're good.
we're learning that if we if, if we shut down, let's say we lose power, in order for us to start these fans, we got to close all the dampeners oh, and start them one at a time, and then open the dampers up. And that's what these guys are going to show us that, I suppose, how to start these things. It's going to be extremely labor intensive. Each one's got to be open individually. Yeah. For startup. If you start, if you start a, a couple of fans, uh -huh. it ends up drawing a vacuum and spinning the blades the wrong way. Okay. And then you go to then you go to fire it up, and it'll just kick the breakers. So we have to, if we shut the fans down, the dampers have to be closed, or the air rushing by will short circuit through there and put the exhaust into the compost building. So, so what, what are we looking at as far as uh, operations? How, how long and, and how often are we running for full time? Or are they shut off every evening? Or are they running during the operation? Or what? We're going to shut some down every evening. And we're we're going to reduce the air changes when we're not occupying the facility. So in those in those cases, we're going to have to have a routine where we where we know we shut down these eight fans, yeah. and we'll have to walk over, close the dampers. They can run against the dampers. Good is good news. So it's not a big deal if we. Want to go to a different fan? We don't know. We're getting the electricity trying to turn off. All right. He was saying that these two first uh, fans right here pull from trauma screen. Right. right. The, the, yeah, the they create a vacuum. Pull from the room. Right. But well, we had to get our six air changes in this room six. for occupancy. Six. And we also had to remove the dust from the screen. So this series of silver ducting here is actually just drawing a vacuum and pulling. Yeah the dust that might be in the tumbling around the screen. So where's and the, the rest of these the roof coming? This fresh air is coming from the roof? No, yeah. The right there. It's pa it's pa where, where's the right there. Air into it? See daylight? So the ceiling pulling the air, fresh air in, and yep. we're pulling the, the air in. We're drawing a vacuum and it's pulling air passively in from the ceiling. Okay. That's just the gravity feed right there. What? That's not forced air. There's not fans on the roof? No, pulling not air there. Air. That's okay. pa it's passive. It's, yeah. it's so we're creates a suction. The air out of the roof. The There's just a bird okay. bird cage up there to make sure okay. we don't get critters some in there. Some of those um, apparatus up on the roof have electrical controls. You know, some are just like free. Some are blowers. Some, some are just, yeah. 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 I walked up there. I noticed that some have motors on them. Some don't. Yeah. Some well, some are just well, like this would look the same as if there was a motor in it. And there's louvers, so it's there's like a doghouse on top of that. Yeah. And some have a motor inside, and some don't. Um, I think there's I don't remember how many. There's a 12 motors or something like that, six on each rubers? side. No, I don't think they're just fixed. I think they're I fixed, think they're yeah. Fixed. All right. Okay, these are the screening exhaust fans. Two of them pull air from this overhead ductwork through the trommel screen hood, which is right above the trommel screen unit. Pulls air, dust, whatnot out through, drops it back into these two fans. Those two blow it up into this duct, flows it through into the back house filter system in order to pull the dust and debris out of that. There's three other fans that boost the air pressure, blowing it through the, into the back house. Pulls air in from up above the uh, conveyors in the uh, mechanical air, uh, screening area. Blow, we can go down this way. Are those three mainly for boosting? What they're main, they're doing? They're pulling the air out of the uh, this room, okay. and it boosts it and filters it because it's. I gather this is probably going to be fairly dusty in here. Well, yeah, depending on how well them first two fans pulled up. Yeah, well, they're going to pull it pretty good out of that. Yeah. They got a hood that's pretty well sealed so, around so, it. So these will pull whatever's floating plus they're plus they're needed to boost that to, the bo bag to boost that to get enough air and volume to flow through the bag house and yeah. out into the system. So if we run the bag house. We have to run all of these fans. Honestly, I don't know for sure. I, I don't know. It's designed to run all of them, as far as you know. It can, yeah. I don't know if it has to, okay. or if it can run less than that for to save on energy or not. Okay. That would be something the engineer might have an answer for. Okay, fair enough. And the bag house system, it's got two conveyors underneath it that pull the once the dust is knocked off of the filters. We'll be going through that, just how all of that works tomorrow in the training session then. But all that come, will be dropped off into these conveyors, dropped a, into a bunker to be put back into the system. It, from there it runs, the air runs out through these, through the bottom of this conveyor, back up in this overhead duct, runs along this wall and blows out into the composting area.
to add supply air for that section. That's so the dampeners that are in place over on your two uh, suction fans are just there in case we need to maintenance and lock one out or something like that. Yeah. And actually they're on the outlet side of it, right. so you wouldn't get back pressure blowing back into the fan when the system's turned off. And there's three other fans for the same reason, to shut them down if you need to do maintenance so or anything like on that. Each individual duct. On each individual fan okay. that blows up into that duct. Any other questions? Okay. That's about it. Did everything. you actually want to see the fan running, all five fans yeah, running? Yeah, they're getting power. Oh. So once, right Gil's going to call me when they get it ready. <laughs> so this the principle, this is sucking air that way. What's it prevent it from going the opposite way? Is that what the, the other yeah. fans that are running or a, dam a closed damper a closed would prevent damper. it. Yeah. So like both fans go off and this could inadvertently head back that way. It, it could blow back that way if the fans were turned off. But if they were, there would be some sort of other problem, and we'd it'd be shutting the, the fans. You'd have to shut the fans down, manually come out and close all the dampers, or whichever dampers needed to be closed, and then open them back up. And there's little hand wheels for each one of the dampers to operate them. And each fan has one. Yeah, those will always be 100% open. Gen yeah, unless there's too much air or not enough air resistance and then you might want to adjust them down so they're not 100% open because I know we had to do that on some of the other fans because they would just they could put out more air than they do and then they over amp on the motor and it would cause an overheat. You want to let's let's get the damper control on film. Okay. So you can kind of explain how it works. It's a training Okay. Okay. okay, these dampers, just a simple butterfly damper. When you're opening it, you can see this wheel here turning. That would be, that would be shut. Turn it back the other way. That would be open. Do you expect the airflow not to change that if it was partial? If it was set partial, no, it shouldn't. It should. There should be enough strength in that just setting by itself to prevent it from spinning back or anything like that. Is it the same gauge on the overhead ones with the chain? Can you see it from on the ground or not? Um, honestly, I don't know. How do you see it? Yeah, I think you would have to be able to get up there to, to see whether it's open or not on those. You might be able to do a white or something on there to make it more obvious so you can see it. You would attach something on there. Yeah. Or paint a strip or whatever. Turn it around with binoculars. There you go. <laughs> for stilts. Put you in stilts. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way all of, all of these here work. Okay. The same way. There's one that's operated on chain. And you can see the same kind of deal. You can see the where the arrows are pointing to tell whether it's open or closed. So the maintenance, the extent of the maintenance in this, all the ventilation system is a couple of zerk fittings and the belts. There's nothing we got to do with the ducts or other than opening and closing them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe occasional cleaning if they need it. <laughs> How does one clean the duct? You have to climb inside of it and brush it out, sweep it out. Something along those lines. Generally, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Okay. Debris on these fans. We should be anticipating that being a problem. It shouldn't be any kind of a major problem. You shouldn't get any large debris into it. Something, say, the size of a two by four might stop a blade or something like that. But you shouldn't have anything like that. Period of time. They're designed to accumulating onto the blades of the fan. It, it might be an issue. I don't lean off there. There's nothing, there's nothing you know about. Yeah, I don't know of it. There might be something like that. If I hadn't thought of it. Well, that's fans moving at a pretty high rate of speed, and you're moving uh, dust. Uh, so it, it may collect on exactly it. It may have to be scraped off every so often. 
whatever adds up, I believe it would be dislodged on the startup and blown on down to the system. Uh, I looked at a lot of big blower wheels like that, I didn't really see anything add up on them. Unless something foreign gets into the ductwork. I bet we'd see if it started building up, we'd probably see an increase in amp draw when we're trying to start it. We'd probably have some signs, we'd be able to, then we'd have to inspect it. Right, right. Yeah. During maintenance, you might well, look at not, the amp draw and check it. That's not a routine it. thing that you guys know about. No. Uh -huh. okay. no. It's, they don't provide an access door to get in there and see that. Uh, yeah. take off take a lot of unbolting and all to get at it. And, now and that may not be a bad idea, depending on uh, noticing, like you said. Uh, Richard does say, say it needs to be inspected So how, how do we know, we, unless that's what we take care of, how to adjust all these initial startups? I mean, do we quarter flap, full flap? Or? Uh, the speeds aren't variable on the motors, it's just one speed? On these motors, I don't believe they are. It's got a if set RPM, if I believe. It's up and that's going. Like and then how do you know you're overloading that with too much air? Then you go shut these down? Yeah. That would probably strip the pressure switch, oh, pressure on, the, switch on the bag house. But is Coot setting all these dampers into some position for startup? Yeah, we had them set at a roughly about, I think it was about 80% closed for right now until there's some pressure on the system. For I know that's what it was for the other fans. I don't know for sure about these fans. So my question is, when we go to run this thing in a few weeks, are we supposed to figure out how to open, how to set the dampers, or is this is Coots on the hook for that, or do I need to talk to the contractor? Um, I would assume that we'll be here to at least verify that it's up and running. Right. And Just to make sure like we got proper air movement. And all yeah. Can okay. we go by the arrow where it's pointing to the word? Yeah. That doesn't mimic the valve position then? No, it goes by what, okay. what the word says. So for this so right that's now. open, even though it's up and down, doesn't mean your valve's up and down. Right, because this has been, had to be rotated. Yeah. So, so you go by the instruction, not by the... Yeah, that doesn't necessarily... That doesn't represent the angle. <laughs> that's right, you got to turn it down in your head. Just... You need to have a mirror. In order to mount it at that elevation right there, that's where it needed to be. So, how sensitive is like the, the balance on these things? I mean, is this something we gotta take the handles off or have some training? Can nobody touch these things? Just throw the whole system out of whack if somebody comes and cranks us a couple of turns? I don't know. I wouldn't think so, Jeff, because it's all just going through the back house and it's going right back into the building. I, I don't see why wide open. Yeah, I don't think it should, I'm not really talking about this per se, but mostly on, you know, because there is a balance, especially with the, the uh, I think the process family, they had the different sections of the ducting blocked off and stuff to put air balance. Uh, and those were all kind of dynamic, I think, depending on, our, on the load of the piles, I think we adjust those. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get a better understanding of what the impact is. For those, it, it definitely depends on what's, what's on the pile and that kind of stuff. And that's what the pressure differential system that's running lines through. Now those PNIDs show the process fans on the east half of the building to be set to blow, to run off all the Right, to blow up through the piles right. and so suck the, in from the outside. If I looked at the PNIDs, it looks like the pressure dip gauge won't work on positive, only on negative. If I'm not mistaken, or does it? I, that I don't know. Okay. So how would you set originally? I mean, do you do, do you have a gauge, or how do you do that? Um, yeah, they went by the amp draw on the motors. By the amp draw. And when it starts so getting too much draw, it'll trip a breaker inside if that's fine. They, because they don't want that, they adjust the dampers down. Okay. So, so, so it flows it's the air. Trial and air looking at, at the, at the amp Yeah. Okay. This is point down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ready?
feel it. Is that what this is? Yeah, the, each fan is uh, 26,850 or 28,650. I don't remember off the top of my head. How many do you have running right now? Right now there's just the one. Operate with that damper closed with that fan on. Right, no, I know, but it, I'm just thinking somebody just forgot to open it because it had been down, they turned it on. It's gonna... It, it should. If something went wrong and it started to just free spin because of the pressure in it, it would overload the switch yeah. and shut it down, shut that fan down. We close it right now, man. Would it affect the fan in any way? I do not know. <laughs> it would overload it. You take it the load I, off. Yeah, you would take the load off. It would spin it up, and it would probably trip the breaker in the uh, mechanical. Right now, it's about half open anyway. Yeah. Because it's pulling out of both screens all the time. Yeah, it's pulling out of both screens all the time. Uh, it'll be 50. 2,000 CFM. 52? Each one's 20. Let me check the number. I think it's 2650. Okay. Can you explain how the dip pressure gauge works? Uh, can you explain that? Um, that might be the, the dip pressure gauge guy? Yeah, the, right. those guys. So we got air there and air there. So on either side of the fan. So this is from the floor. So if you run positive, you got air coming. In there. To the fan and okay. cycling around. Cycling so across. You, have, you see it's on both sides. If you run positive, you have it on the exhaust side and the exhaust side. So you don't have a dip pressure gauge on positive. If you run it negative, you do. You have it on both sides of the fan because the air is going out that way and in this way. Right. So there is no, there's no way to measure that on positive as far as I can gather. That is the way it looks. That's the way. Okay. Yeah. There's, it wouldn't register because it would be both positive on yeah. when this is blowing out through there. Okay. Right now it's set to run negative air. Right now it's set to it's set to pull in from the floor right right now. Right. And for normal operation it would be this damper here would be open. This damper would be open. This damper would be closed and that overhead damper would be closed. For a bullet right. to be blowing air from in Draw this room. Air in here, and just then push it out through the floor. Yes. Right. So just by manipulating these valves, you can reverse the flow of air. Yeah. yeah. The fan doesn't change directions; just how the direct where you send the air. Yeah. Whether you're sucking it or but pushing. What was something was happening when you guys tried to do that, Jeff? It was throwing breakers. Well. I, because there was no load on the fan. Right. It, no load on the piles with the damper all the way open. It was allowing the fan to over rev. And that would trip the breaker. That's, that's, tell me if I'm saying this right, but like on a vacuum cleaner, when you, when you constrict the air, you reduce the load. Right. They, you, you, even though the motor seems like it's spinning faster, it's just spinning free. It's not working. It's actually pulling less amps. So if you give it more, more, too much air, it just overloaded. The engine tried to work too hard. The motor tried. To oh, you gave it too much air. I just what? I opened everything wide open, and it couldn't hack it. So somehow we have to. I don't know where we start. Somebody has to help us out. Yeah, you probably start at about 80 percent closed. And then as a pile fills up, you can open them up more. And then you just have an amp meter and you just learn what your maximum is. As far as the, the intake side, the opening? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you're right. So in other words, we threw it wide open and it was too much. Too much Ooh. intake. Yeah, too much intake or exhaust. It, it, okay. either, either, either way, side. either way, right. it'll we, be. Yeah, as we restrict the exhaust with the, with the material, then we'll probably open this, who knows? Maybe even all the way. We'll have to, I guess, sure. learn that with amp meters, right? Yeah, yeah that's, I was going to say, how would you know where? Yeah, you're going to have to monitor it, we'll see play whether with it's. Multiple pipe up marks. The tech specs call for the engineer to put a red mark on where the levers are supposed to be set. And, uh, we'll talk about that some more because it'll change so much as we can. How are these set up here? They're just drilled from the factory at probably every 12 or 20 degrees or something along those lines. It's quarters, right? There's four? Yeah, there's four of them. Yes. Oh, okay, right, that's right. That, okay. These would be 
timer, I believe. Or, you know, on from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or whatever, right? Yeah. Did you discuss these uh, flaps here? These are the, the, the spectacle blinds. They're set up by the way the, in, they're set up right now the way the engineer showed them on his drawings. They may be changed however you guys need them to be changed. When you see this the solid plate, the bottom side looks this like that has, has a big there. opening in the middle of it. So this section right now, so the way it's set up, side. is open from that end yeah, down there yeah, yeah, to that one right there. And it's blanked off there, so it's pulling, this fan is pulling just from these so we did that. I did that one pieces here. Room. The next fan down the line Something is pulling from in the blower, this point. The you can up. see the next open one, the and it's pulling from that, those fans, over or those floor grates. Up here, the amps went down, We're actually so blowing into those floor, gate, floor grates for this system. But I didn't do anything with this. And so if you needed to, bypass. you had more on this pile and you need more air, you can uh, get what you need for the drying process or curing so process. you could even put it partially in. Uh, uh, you, oh, no, it would either be either open or closed. It couldn't be part way. Yeah, there's there's no there's no way to seal if you do that. So the only way they go in is either fully open or fully closed. And if you needed more or less air, you'd have to do that with the dampers or with the. Well, these don't have BFDs, so they would have to be with. These are dampers. these are one speed BFD means you control. You can control the the frequency of them, and they can change speeds okay. according here, to that. Here they're not. They're one speed. They're yeah, right. these are all one speed. Right now, about the thing are those VFDs or are they two of these are VFDs on this side, one of them's not, or maybe it's the other way around. One of them is, and two of them aren't, but I don't know off the top of my head which ones are which. That the electrician would take care of that stuff. Well, what do those gauges do? I missed that conversation. Those are the um, pressure differential gauges, sure. okay. and they sense pressure differential across the, the fan when it's running in uh, negative mode. Are we going to run any of these? Um, it's going to, but I haven't got a hold of the electrician to tell him which one to turn on yet. Oh, okay. Um, but not, I just want to make sure we got power to it first, and then we can. And then there's a smog problem in this space. Yeah, it started out. Um, they have a bunch of rules on auto emission, uh, you know, the generation plants, the compost thing. A lot of the things even though composting is compared to a lot of the people's ministry. As I said, if you have a compost pile, you're putting out all the organic all of the exhaust fans, the big ones on the perimeter of the building, have the same kind of damper set up. It's got a meter uh, actuator up there and the same kind of markings. And you pull on it one way and it opens. You pull it the other way and it pulls it closed. Pull open now. That's back to about where they had it set up before, about 25% open for right now. Now on a fan like that, if I open that all the way up, I'm not gonna. I'm always. It, that. It's always blowing back it's up through the ductwork, yeah. sucking in from above, but so it's not gonna change any of that. Yeah, that damper there is just either really open or closed. Either, well, depending on how much, if there's an empty cell out in the uh, biofilter for some reason or other, it'll have less restriction. So you might need to damper it down for something, for a case like that. And you need to damper them down before you start them. Right. And then if you if you have to shut a fan down to do maintenance or something like that, on, you'll have to okay. shut it down. So if I were to shut one down and do maintenance or turn it off, close the damper that way I'm not pushing the air from the rest pushing of the air back out. Back through the system again. And if I go turn the power on to this and and that's closed, no issues? You'll have to have somebody there to turn it on and when it, as it comes on, open it up. How big of a time frame would you say would be recommended? In other words, let's say I go to that MCC room and turn it on and then I walk out here and do this. That, is it too much time? I would prefer that there was somebody here. Okay. To, to operate it. As soon as, it. This fan, as, soon as it kicks on, it starts spinning. Is there an arm this thing against the closed damper? That's what we're going over. I don't know that it would, but it could create a static back pressure and let it free spin too much and over rev. 
because it wouldn't be moving any air with it against the damper. So but if you're, rad. yeah, so you, if you're it'd be better to have somebody out here as soon as they hear it start running. The main reason for even closing that is just to keep it from spinning backwards, which means the motor has to work so much harder to try and start it. It has to stop it and then start it up again. It'll trip it off every time. Plus, we got to close that. If it <laughs> so I, I don't have the experience to say that. <laughs> okay. What is the mister analyzer? That's what I do. I don't know on those. I believe it's similar to a sprinkler head for for the duct and for the stuff inside this. Just sprays water out into the airstream. Well, we assume that that water would collect. Is it okay to collect down? Wouldn't that be ponding down there against that root or something like that? Um, I know they have the sprayed coating on the inside of that that tunnel. I don't know if it's if they've got a sump on this end or not of the building. So is that a counts thing to get that water started as part of this, or is that somebody else? Uh, yeah, that is part of ours. That's part of uh, okay. they, they've done the startup on it as far as I know. So before you guys go, we'll be able to have that spray going, and you'll show us how to do the spray, or what's the, what the design is at least on that, or is it open? Order all the way open all the time, or do you have any idea? I don't know. Okay. I'll see what I can find out. Okay. Um, as far as I know, it's just a ball valve that okay. turns it on and that turns the it on or turn, turn, it, turn, it, turn it off. Yeah. yeah. So if you, I guess if you're getting an extremely dusty condition, you can open it up and start spraying or close it down a little bit. This is the evaporator coil. The filter compartment, I believe, is on the other end. Uh, Condenser sit sitting outside by the railroad tracks. Well, it looks like the filters would have been more accessible from the other side. Then again, there may be refrigerant lines and all in front of them. Excuse me. Well, that's not too clever, but there, there's the filters. How they come out with some difficulty here. Oh, well, then they just yeah, drop out. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh man. Is there some more of those around here right now? More of these? No, more of these. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. They're pretty bad. Yeah, because we don't want that sleeve to get all filthy. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Uh, Trying yeah, not to drop too much dirt inside, unfortunately. In then pulling them all. Usually they'd have a slide thing here to yank the filters yeah. out right also. Here, you know, it'll go all the way across the coil, so there's going to be four of them up above. There's your slider right All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can take the door, but we got our fridge lines and all right here, so we're not able to, I don't think we'll be able to slide them out from that side. It takes eight of them. There's still four more in there. That's half of them, 16 by 20, 16 by 24. Thermostat was locked at 72 degrees. I had to override it. It's energy thing, because it is 72 degrees in here. System's running now. The green light is on the thermostat, so the air conditioning is on. Both the fan is both on one on each end. It's, they're spinning on the same shaft, okay. so it shouldn't be one spinning different so than was, the other. It was, it was spinning slow. So it it may have been that may have been that one of the other ones was running and blowing some of the air back out through that. I don't know. But these are all disconnects are up and ready. Yeah, they're up and up. So and they're energized from, from the there. panel or? Yeah, I would assume so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. These shouldn't have any kind of a startup issue with they shouldn't. backflow, pressure. They got right there to the, Yeah. If one of these or two of these are running, it's turning another one. Yeah, well, there's two are in e on each section, so they're not tied, and the two sections aren't tied together. 
so. Two, so are these two tied together? These two are on the same line, blowing into the same ductwork. Those two over there are on, the on one line, blowing into that separate duct. Oh, okay, okay. In the mechanical room or all the way up on the side of them? Really? Just Dis disconnect. You gotta get your boom lift to run up there and grease those things once a week. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could open up a panel and work on the dang thing. Yeah, that's so weird. Tar I mean, actually, you can get all the filters out from here. Well, it'd be nice if you could just clean the filters in the place, you know? Maybe you can. Get some compressed air. Come on, that one works with all the shit out of the garden. Yeah, that's what I asked if you had a hose bib on the roof. No drain. You didn't hear a positive answer. No drain. You gotta take them out to the hose. You have to clean them, yeah. Well, there are heat pumps, so they're they're not gas electric, they're just electric. So we can, these will heat the place and heat and Yeah, heat and cool, yeah. I don't think, they don't make straight cooling anymore. You, you get heat and cool, and whether you use only one or the other or both. So, yeah, it's a heat pump, so it, it makes the heat with the compressor also. It has a reversing valve, which you call for made in, this is New York, it's made in New York, a carrier, so it's made to always be able to heat. You have to energize the reversing valve for cooling, which of course happens. If not, you replace the, re the reversing valve. We have the return air filters, easily accessible most of the time. And they're pretty dusty also. But. They must have been using the air downstairs. See about... Re Pardon me? Yeah, these are, I think, 16 by 16. And falling apart. 16 by 16 by 2. Yeah. No. no, those were 16 by 25 by 2. Yeah. They're brand new units. And it's got an economizer on it that would have a setting, a first stage cooling setting would just bring fresh air in off the roof, not using the compressor. Well, I don't know if the system's been being used here, uh, if it has been, and in the heating mode, which is unlikely, but it could be, well, it could be, it's a heat pump, and that, that wouldn't be happening on this side if, if it wanted the defrost to be on the other end. So I don't know what the moisture's for. There's condensation off the... The thermostats for upstairs. One's here, and the other one, for some reason, is over in there. I think it's in the bathroom. I don't know why. It's in the woman's bathroom. Yeah, I think that's the woman's bathroom.